Hello, my name is Jared Hardner. This presentation is about conducting biodiversity impact assessments that will be compliant with the 2019 update of Performance Requirement 6 of the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, or PR6 for short. This presentation is part of a series that walks the viewer through all stages of developing an environmental impact study and mitigation plan that will comply with PR6. Viewers should also consult the 2020 guidance note for PR6 available on the web. EBRD's Performance Requirement 1 provides the general requirements for impact assessment. Biodiversity and Ecosystem Service Impact Assessment should be performed in accordance with good international practice. For example, see Good Practices for Biodiversity Inclusive Impact Assessment and Management Planning developed by the Multilateral Financial Institutions Biodiversity Working Group. This presentation clarifies specific details needed to identify and assess the significance of biodiversity and ecosystem service impacts relative to the requirements of PR6. As required in PR1, projects must include an analysis of alternatives in terms of project location, technology, size, scale and design, mitigation options, and a without project scenario. Biodiversity and ecosystem impact should be included in that analysis. Where the proposed project or plan impacts priority biodiversity features, it must be shown there are no technically and economically feasible alternatives. Where impacts are expected on critical habitats, it must be shown that no other viable alternatives within the region exist for development of the project and habitats of lesser biodiversity value. The impact assessment should identify all types of impacts to be analyzed. It will generally include the physical footprint of the project, shown here in black. The direct footprint is extended to consider other direct impacts, such as emissions, effluence, dust, noise, and light impacts, as shown in red. If a project induces other impacts, such as other types of development near the project, this must be included as well, as shown in orange. As I explained in our presentation on biodiversity baseline studies, the technique of conducting separate impact assessments for parts of a larger project is prohibited by EBRD, where slicing a project into smaller pieces hides significant impacts. By slicing a project into smaller pieces, it is possible to conclude that none of the pieces have significant impacts, while in truth, if the entire project were considered, significant impacts would be apparent. In the above example, it is obvious that it would make little sense to evaluate just a short road segment of a much larger road construction project. For PR6, this is true even if the EBRD is only funding one component of the project. More difficult to understand is that an impact assessment must also consider the cumulative effects of a project in combination with other relevant projects in the landscape. For example, the construction of a new road segment must consider the effects it will have in combination with other existing and planned roads and the other types of development projects that the road segment seeks to enable. Where there are other stressors on biodiversity and ecosystem services from past, present, or reasonably foreseeable development, the cumulative effect of adding the proposed project's impacts will be more relevant than the project's expected impacts considered in isolation. In other words, the addition of a project impact, if even small, can be significant if a habitat or species experiences additional impacts from other sources. A threshold may be exceeded by the sum of these stressors, with deleterious effects on the viability of that habitat or species. The impact assessment must consider cumulative impacts. Direct and indirect impacts can result in the reduction of species populations, loss or degradation of habitat, habitat fragmentation, disruption of wildlife movement, the spread of invasive species, and reduced generation of and or human access to ecosystem services. Evaluating the impacts to biodiversity features and ecosystem services should take an ecosystem level approach by considering the ecological patterns, processes, and functions that are necessary to maintain them. Looking at our theoretical example, 
we can evaluate how this project might affect the viability of features in their respective ecologically appropriate areas of analysis. In the case of the rare plant, the project footprint will significantly reduce its local habitat, which will jeopardize its persistence in that area. In the case of the mammal, there is a measurable impact, but local viability is not likely reduced. Let's return to the concept of cumulative impacts. In this example, a small hydropower project is planned. The impact assessment for the project may show small impacts, but when considered in combination with the many other small hydropower projects planned in the region, the impacts on the local and global viability of endemic fish species is profound. This really dramatizes the importance of considering cumulative impacts. Another important concept in PR6 is the precautionary approach. Where there is evidence that an action may have an adverse impact on biodiversity, but there is uncertainty as to its likelihood or consequence, the EBRD will assume a significant adverse impact and require appropriate mitigation for such assumed impact. The precautionary approach is highly relevant to managing risks to biodiversity as nature is inherently complex and science continues to have important gaps. Some projects may pose a risk of impacting protected areas. This triggers additional analyses. Projects that might impact a protected area either from within or outside of its boundaries and will degrade its ability to meet its management goals will not comply with PR6. In cases where there is potential for impacts to occur, project design must include consultation with protected area authorities. Moreover, projects may not have any significant residual impacts on natural world heritage sites. Any project or plan within a Natura 2000 or Emerald Network site or in its vicinity requires an appropriate assessment conducted by national authorities following European Commission guidance to ensure that it will not have a significant impact on the integrity of the site. An appropriate assessment is not a substitute for the assessments the client must conduct itself for PR6 compliance. Furthermore, EBRD is not a competent authority and cannot opine on derogation of the Habitat's directive. The client must apply whatever requirements result from the two assessment approaches. PR6, an appropriate assessment. Following is a list of the critical elements of the impact assessment. It should include a description of methods, map of area of impact, alternatives analysis, impact identification, impact characterization, and an assessment of impact with and without mitigation. For more detailed information on biodiversity impact assessments, see Good Practices for Biodiversity Inclusive Impact Assessment and Management Planning. You can also visit us on the web at www.hg-llc.com. Thanks, and I hope to see you soon in the field.